welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 19, and today, verse 5, God just uh, told Moses in these first four verses of the chapter how he brought his people out of Egypt. He reminded him, but we come to this fifth verse, and let's just look at this fifth verse today and see what God says there, because here we're getting right out to the main spot. Here, I'll read it. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. If you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, God's plan is you obey his voice. He's got counsel for us. He knows what works. He knows what's best for us. He designed us, right? So like he completely knows. And if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant. So there's an agreement going on here. God is anticipating. He's going to put his people into a covenant with him here at Sinai as we work our way through this. And he's, he's now giving them, he's laying it out. So obedience is built into this plan, and we need to realize that. And a lot of people say, oh, we're not worried about obedience. We're under grace now. Do whatever you want. They say, oh, we don't mean do whatever you want, but just the obedience part. Don't emphasize that. That might be legalistic. Well, guess what? You know, when you're married to somebody, you need to be faithful to them. And when you're in agreement with God, you need to be faithful to him, right? So if we will obey, if, if we will keep his covenant, this, this is... This is not just God just dropping good stuff on us. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it as we've gone through Exodus again and again. The people moan and complain. We need food. God gives them free food. We need water. God gives them free water. So that's there. God is glad to give. But here he's wanting us to be teaming with him and uniting with him in this. Let's, let's keep that in mind. Now, that's not the only thing it said what? If you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples. So this is our, our opportunity. When we join in covenant with God, we get to become his own possession. Now, look, he's the God of, he made everybody, right? All humans owe their existence to this God. Without God, you wouldn't exist. But in a unique sense here, he is calling on us and he wants to lift us and bring us in a different place. He's bringing us into a close relation with himself. And so this is a big deal. This is important. He is offering, he wants to make the Hebrew people his own special possession, those who are his, those who believe in him, his own special possession. Yes, there's everybody, but these people he's going to bring into a covenant with himself. You will be my own possession among all the peoples of the earth, for all the earth is mine. And there's an interesting business here, too, because uh, all the earth is God's. And this might be a surprise to some people who are thinking, well, like, um, you know, every area has got its God. The desert gods live here. This God lives here. This is the God of this people. This is the God of the Amalekites. This is the God of the Hebrews. But God here is saying, look, uh, the whole earth is mine. I am God everywhere. I'm God in the entire universe. I, uh, this is monotheism. These people are going to enter into a unique uh, relationship with this God, not a polytheistic, not many gods, but this will be a monotheistic thing. And you don't have to wait till you get to the New Testament for monotheism. Uh, it's right here in the second book in the Old Testament, and it's before this. There is one God, and he is inviting his people here. Very special opportunity. Okay, so tomorrow morning we're going out and see what else God has to say in this next